Nick, Tiki, and Tierney first chat together. How you doing, brother? What's happening? What's going on, guys? Great to be on with you, listening to the show today. You guys sound awesome. Great to have you guys on the fan. Excited to place the legal bets tomorrow over at Bed Rivers. Happy Football Friday. Let's get after Let's it. Let's go. I, we got an opportunity here, guys. What a distinctive voice this I guy know, has. man. I love it. I love it. He's How ready. How clear. You're Chris. You're on a... Uh, on a Comrex, I can tell. Or... Well, on the Comrex for sure. Now, some people like the voice, some people hate it, but I think the good thing is that's what we like, right? Like, yep. We don't want down the middle. Like me or hate me, just react. That's exactly. what I'm yeah, just don't view us as benign talents. Have a reaction, <laughs> man. I'm totally yes, with you. Let's start locally here, man. 16 points, a lot to lay. You know, we know what the Bills did to the Jets last time out. So the Jets are getting 16 up in Buffalo. The Giants are getting seven home to the Washington football team. I mean, you might even say stay away from these. But if you want to advise a direction for the local betting direction, which way are you feeling right now, Nick? Yeah, we'll talk about my, my hideous, pathetic New York Giants in a second. But let's start with the Jets. <laughs> BT, I know you're a big Jets guy. This may surprise you to hear. I bet the Bills when they played the Jets at uh, MetLife when Mike White started. And everyone loved Mike White in that game. It's yeah. ridiculous. The Bills were going to kill them. Um, I, I like the Jets here, like qu quite a bit, actually. And this will dovetail in with some analysis that we maybe do with some other games coming up this week. Like, it is a quote-unquote must-win game for the Bills, like when they win the AFC East, if they lose and the Patriots win. The Patriots win the division. But it's not the BCS. Like, the Bills don't have to win this game 52-17 to win the division, right? Yeah. They could win 10-9 and they win the AFC East here. And the Jets, like, intuitively for me, because I make numbers for NFL games, my number's like 15 for this game. No difference between 15 and 16. So I don't have a number edge necessarily with mm -hmm. this game, but intuitively here, I think if the Bills jump out to a big lead in this game, why would they play their guys the entire way through? They know what their seed is going to be. So I think they'll pull guys. Also, the Jets have been super competitive. I agree with you guys with what you were saying. Jets more hope than the Giants. I think clearly moving forward here. Love what the Jets did last week against Tampa, even losing at the end. So I think, like, intuitively, I think the Jets make a lot of sense here. I don't think we're going to get a 17, which is what we would look for here. 17 is a, a, more of a key number than 16 or 15. Yep. So Jets plus 16, I kind of like. Now, here's the thing. No, hold, before you get to the Giants, and, and it's interesting because I, I have bet against the Jets a few times this year, like, at their, at their dormant worst. I'm like, all right, I'm going to at least make a little scratch, you know, because they have no chance to win this game. Um, the, the thing about this, I, I and I'm not going to bet against them because they're playing better and I'm rooting for them now. But the re, without Berrios, man, I mean, if you take away Berrios the last couple of weeks, where's the offense? So with, with him being hurt, I don't know how the Jets are going to score points to cover that number. Sure. I think what we've seen with Buffalo, though, and we saw this a little bit last week in the red zone um, against Atlanta, like this team gets down by the red zone and they've been a little stagnant. And mm -hmm. I think that they're leaning more on the ground game and Devin Singletary's been a revelation for them, honestly. And I think he's going to be a really important contributor for them when they get to the postseason, if they're going to make a run, potentially get, get back to their first Super Bowl since 1994, where I, I mean, look, of course, and, I, and I've said this with, with other hosts, right, and on my show and, and other spots I do around the country, like locks exist on like doors and like bank vaults. That's it. <laughs> like, like, That's like they don't. There's no such thing as a lock. That's true. So me saying I like the Jets, you could be right, BT. The Jets might not score in the game. The Bills could win the game 35 nothing. Just that I think, like, at this number, yep. given the situation that we have, you are paying a tax to bet Buffalo. It is the must-win tax, and I don't know if we can <laughs> handicap, like, what that actually means. Okay. Yeah. I'll bet the Jets. I got you. How about the Giants? You. They're getting seven here. Washington's probably a little bit upset if you can have a billboard game for teams that aren't in the postseason and have no chance. But what about the Giants? Well, I mean, I hate them. I mean, I'm a fan. <laughs> like, I love the Giants. Um, I, I, Brandon, I'll give you credit, man. You're still, hold it. At least your team's got some hope. See, for me as a Giants fan, I'm rooting for Washington to smash the Giants this weekend because I think everyone <laughs> needs to be replaced. It may be a story for another time, but how how could how could you bet the, the Giants on Sunday? <laughs> Jake Fromm and Brian Lewis. You can't. This, they're not going to be able to move the ball. Like If they go down, they're not going to throw it. We saw that last week against the Bears with Glennon. That's they're right. going to run the ball the entire game here. And also, like, Joe Judge, and I know he backtracked, oh, I didn't mean it about Ron Rivera. It's like, yes, you did. And like you said it, and Rivera knows it, and the team knows it in Washington. I actually think Washington's going to smash them on Sunday. Now, I bet six and a half earlier in the week for the uninitiated people that are just getting into this. There is a massive difference between laying six and a half and seven. Mm -hmm. That means you win on seven as opposed to pushing on seven, which along with three is one of the, the two key numbers, most key numbers. So big difference between six and a half and seven. I would still never, ever, ever bet the Giants in this game. And I'm also rooting for Washington. So let's go Washington on Sunday. Beat down the Giants. I think this is the only way the change can be affected. Um, I'm sorry, Tiki. And no. Tally, the Giants 
That's out there. <laughs> I mean, but wait, why are you rooting against him? I, know, I know you're right? pissed at him. Why are you rooting against him? Because I think that Joe Judge should lose his job. Okay. Um, I, I don't think he deserves a third year. And uh, I know people will say, well, you know, the team's not good and they're playing with the backup quarterback and the line stinks. I'm like, okay, like we can have that conversation. But what about like earlier in the year when everyone was healthy? My problem with Judge is he's way too conservative. Like, I feel like he's the type of guy that gets aroused by sending the punter and the kicker out there. <laughs> he makes yeah. terrible in game decisions. Like, when the team is good, so like if the roster is better next year, this dude's going to be punting on fourth and two from the opposition's 40-yard line. Yeah, like, yeah, I, mean, I don't want this guy as my head coach. Get him I mean, overgrown phys ed teacher. Goodbye. If there, is a, if there was a time to experiment with, can we get this fourth and four on our own 40-yard line? It'd be this year. Oh, he better be aggressive, not, son, not, at the very not, least. Not next year. How about the Chargers game opening drive, fourth and three from the Chargers 40? He punts. punts. Loser. Yeah. Punts. Loser. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. He'd be a nice guy. I don't know him. I don't know him I personally. hear you. Hey, let, me, coach, let, let me get some of these other ones. I have, I have the interesting game to me, even though it means literally nothing, is the Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions. Because I don't know if Aaron Rodgers is going to play the whole game or play even at all. The Detroit Lions have been interesting this year. They're getting three. I, th- I mean, it feels like that line should be enormous. It's not for a reason. Give me your take on that. Yeah, I want to touch on this and then Bengals-Browns if we have some time because I think they kind of operate in the same vein here. Yes. So, I mean, Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers saying like, oh, well, LaFleur wants to play. Rodgers in the game doesn't want to give him three weeks off. Rodgers says he wants to play. If, like, this is anything more than, like, fourth game of the preseason, hand it off twice, throw one pass, and, like, hit the sideline, <laughs> like, there should be, like, a federal investigation into what's happening in Green Bay. Like, they have the number one seed. Yeah. Who cares about the game? That's so, right. I, I made a number for this game earlier in the week, assuming that Jordan Love was going to be the quarterback yep. and that Jared Goff would be the quarterback for the Lions. It does look like, by the way, now that Goff is going to play quarterback for the Lions on Sunday. My number for the game is three. It's Green Bay minus three, I think, is a fair number if it's going to be Jordan Love and backups playing the entire game. So here's what I think is going to happen. If and when the Packers announce that Rodgers, Devontae, etc. are starting the game, the Packers are going to draw interest. This number is going to get bet up. Now, when I come on my Sunday show on The Fan, I'll talk about, like, maybe we could do a Packers first quarter bet if we get word on how long they're going to play in the game. But over the course of a full game, if this gets out to, like, four, four and a half, I'm actually going to bet Detroit because I don't think it's going to be Rodgers and Devontae Adams and company for more than a couple series. Again, yeah. if, if they are out there for more than a couple series, like, send the FBI in to Matt LaFleur's <laughs> office because that would be categorically insane. Nice. Nick, let me ask you this. We're talking to Nick Costas. You better, you bet, Odyssey Sports bet insider here on Tiki and Tierney on the fan. This is a very interesting we and I, I know you have one more game you want to roll through real quick there, but just conceptually, like as a as a roadmap for somebody like you, and I, I love this stuff, and Tiki knows I'm into the games and I like to have a little fun, but you're even deeper into like you're betting quarters and you know you're actually setting lines. I'm not quite going that far. Do you view this as more of an opportunity or more of a, a, a of a potential landmine given all the uncertainties? Do you think this is really a weekend to make big money from your point of view? Well, I think one of like the constant things that I will always say and like the media appearances I do and the show that I host is like there are no like absolutes. It's like the Star Wars line. Like only a Sith speaks an absolute. So there yep. are some games that I feel like are potential landmines. Raven Steelers is a landmine game. So Lamar Jackson's not going to play. Tyler Huntley's the quarterback. The Lions Ravens three and a half. I think the line is perfect in the game. I'm not going to bet it. Like that's a landmine game for me. But I do think there are some games that present opportunity here, right? If you'll allow me, I can discuss one, which is the Browns and the Bengals, which is a game where some people might think, oh, well, Burrow's not going to play and Baker's not going to play. I'm not going to bet the game. I actually think, and curious if you guys agree, that there's a tremendous potential betting angle in this game with the Browns in Cincinnati. So, Bengals open a two and a half point road favorite. Joe Burrow says to the media earlier in the week, I'm not playing in this game. Joe Mixon's got COVID. Zach Taylor says the Bengals are going to sit some starters. They've already clinched the AFC North. They could theoretically improve their seating, but they're going to sit guys and get ready for the for wild card weekend coming up next weekend. As a result, the line flips and now we have the Browns as six point favorites. I watched the game on Monday night, Cleveland Pittsburgh. I'm guessing you guys did too. I'm guessing the people listening did as well, yep. even if it was just to watch Ben Roethlisberger in his final game, presumably, in Heinz Field. I feel like the Browns tried to lose the game. I feel like <laughs> I feel like it was just not like overt, like the Eagles did last year, Week 17 yeah. against Washington. But this, they tanked this game. You got Peyton Manning freaking out the entire broadcast. Why aren't they running Nick Chubb? Well, because they want to lose. Yeah. Why does Why does Stefanski run a sneak with Baker Mayfield and then use one of his three valuable timeouts? Like basically meaning they can't come back and win the game because they're trying to lose because they are a smart front office and by losing and getting last place, which they haven't clinched yet in the division, they guarantee games next year against the Jets, the Jaguars the Broncos and get better draft positioning here. So, if my hypothesis is correct, and I think it's up in the eye of the beholder, if you agree or disagree, and Cleveland is not vested to win the game, 
shouldn't the true number of this game be a pick em, yeah. even if Cincinnati's playing backups? So here's what I want to do. I want to play Cincinnati to win the game plus 215 on the money line and look to double my bet. Nice. There you go. That could good, be wrong, good analysis that's how there. I'm we could always be wrong, but you got a little logic behind the uh, behind the reasoning. That's why we have you on. Nick, good first spot, buddy. A profitable weekend to you. We'll talk to you soon, okay? Be good, Tiki Nick. And t- Tiki and Tierney, congratulations again. Great to have you guys on the fan. Appreciate it. Wishing you guys and all the great listeners minimal sweats, winning bets, the absolute very best of luck. Right. <laughs> 